Good day everyone, thanks for checking out my newest Assassin's Creed video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Now I don't have much of a storyline breakdown for you guys today because the story for this Assassin's Creed was fairly straightforward. Unlike the second one where there's a plot to kill all these lords and you just keep getting slapped across the face with something new. This one is definitely centered around gameplay rather than a compelling story. And honestly, I'm not complaining. After such a hefty story in the second Assassin's Creed, I think the fans deserved a little break from all the craziness and deserved to have a more free range game. And that's exactly what Brotherhood brought to the table. Now before we dive into the story, if you guys are new here, I'm the video game Hokage and I'm currently doing a challenge where I play every Assassin's Creed game before the newest Assassin's Creed game Valhalla comes out. I just finished the third game and I have eight more games still to go, but make sure you keep up with this series by subscribing and show some support by smashing that like button. Let's get to the video. First, the storyline. So, last time we checked, Ezio was supposed to kill Rodrigo Borgia, who was the Pope and the main evil douchebag. However, Ezio did not, and everyone is pretty pissed at Ezio for it, especially Machiavelli. Machiavelli is like, screw you guys, I'm going him. Then Ezio's like, I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> I'm retiring. Then of course Rodrigo gets his whole ass Borgia dictator family and entire army to raid the villa. You know, no big deal, just another Thursday. But they cross the line when they kill Uncle Mario and even worse, they destroyed our armor of Altair which took six seals of Darius to get. See, now you fucked up and the Borgias are going to pay. Rodrigo Borgia ain't even the main problem anymore. It's this guy Cesare Borgia, whose ultimate goal is to rule over all of Italy. And then there's his sister, Lucrezia, and these two got a relationship. Like, an incest relationship. Like a full on, what are you doing, step bro? Minus the step bro part. Like, pretty weird, right? Anyways, Ezio soon finds himself in Rome where he teams up with some old friends to combat the Borgia forces. However, Ezio needs some extra hands on deck, so we start recruiting new assassins into the Brotherhood, hence the name of the game. With our new allies, we slowly take out Borgia's supporters and send Cesare's army into complete disarray. We take this opportunity to eliminate all of Borgia's influence and Cesare himself. See, pretty straightforward story, right? See, there wasn't a whole lot of good versus evil development in Brotherhood like there was in Assassin's Creed 2. However, there was a whole lot of tea amongst friends, family, and companions. See, this is where it gets interesting and where I'll explain the title of the video. To start the tea off, Ezio and his sister Claudia were beefing dummy hard throughout the game. They make it seem like the fights were because Claudia wanted to run the brothel and Ezio is just trying to be a good brother. But you can see there's a lot more abandonment issues when Claudia tells Ezio that she's been on her own for 20 years. Ouch. For the next cup of tea, we got La Volpe accusing Machiavelli of being a traitor and a double agent for the Borgia which is pretty big accusation. And honestly, it had us in the first half, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I almost believed it myself, but good thing we caught the real double agent just before Lavope was about to kill Machiavelli. <laughs> My God. Last but not least, this is the scolding hot tea. Katarina Sforza belongs to the streets, period. So you guys may remember Katarina Sforza from my last video. She was number 11 on the thought counter and also happens to be the Lord of Florally. Well, in the beginning of the game, Homegirl pays Ezio a visit and gives him the sucky sucky. <laughs> Anyways, after clapping dim cheeks, my boy Ezio turns into a full on simp. He's got to rescue her and all this bullshit. Then mid rescuing her, Homegirl's like, oh, I hope you know I only let you hit because I wanted to ensure an alliance with your land. Oh my god, my boy's heart broken in half, just snapped. Like Ezio, like little Ezio tears streaming down his face. <laughs> it ain't pretty, let me tell you that. And whatever dignity we had left, Ezio ends it with, I hope you get medieval COVID, you slut. What happened to Katarina Sforza? She died of pneumonia. That's sad. <laughs> oh, and then there's some part where the goddess makes us stab Lucy. Boring. It is done. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that little story breakdown. Now, last but not least, I wanted to share some thoughts about gameplay and how it's developed over Assassin's Creed 1 and 2. Starting off, looting bodies has become more profitable. In previous games, I never used the loot body feature because the bodies only would carry like five florins, which is pennies, these broke ass bitches. But in Brotherhood, bodies drop materials and significantly more money depending on whose body and what kind of body it is. Overall, the combat in Brotherhood feels a lot better and feels way more fluid than Assassin's Creed 1 and 2. See, in Assassin's Creed 2, the counter never worked because it always got blocked, so combat would just drag on and on and on. 
Also, the AIs never struck first in number two, so you always had to initiate the fight. However, in number one, the enemies were stupid aggressive and all you had to do was counter everything. But I feel like Brotherhood really found that sweet spot where you can perform a variety of different methods to defeat your enemy, whether it's countering, dodging, or striking. Oh, and they reintroduced the kick feature, which I'm happy to see because it wasn't in Assassin's Creed 2, and it's the best move to break down a tough guard other than waiting for a counter. The attacks are a lot more visually appealing as well. I mean, you fucking block this guy's attack and then shoot his ass in the head. Like, goddamn, that shit was clean. I love how they attach the gun to the sword and throwing knives to the knife, so you didn't have to use the weapon wheel every single time you wanted to switch like you did in Assassin's Creed 2. Also, they introduced the weapon throw, which is my favorite fucking feature. You just pick up someone's axe, you just fucking chuck that shit. It's, I just, I don't know why it was so goddamn entertaining, it just, it's just great. However, everything is in complete sunshine and titties over here. I'm starting to see an increase in trailing and following missions, which I know kills the Assassin's Creed franchise in later games, but Brotherhood doesn't have quite too many yet. Investments was also a really cool feature. Just like in the villa in number 2, you can open up properties and shops as long as the Borgia Tower has been destroyed. This is a great way to get money in the game and teaching people how to be entrepreneurs. Lastly, horses. My last thing, I promise. The horses in this game are your ride or die and you can call them from anywhere and they'll come running. Also due to the size of Rome, you're allowed to ride horses anywhere which I love because it beats walking and running everywhere. However, the call your horse button is the same as the purchase a property button. That's really annoying because when I'm about to purchase a property I'm all hyped and shit and then boom horse call. Next thing you know, Henry the horse comes running in ruining my moment. But you know, you get attached to them though. Sorry Leonardo, my new lifelong friend is Henry. Alright, let's go beat his ass Henry. Henry no! And that completes today's videos, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm trying this new thing where I actually try and act like myself, so that way my viewers don't think I'm some fake ass hoe. Anyways, don't forget to like the video if you like the video and subscribe because you don't want to miss the next couple of Assassin's Creed games I got coming up. We got eight more Assassin's Creed games to go. See you guys next time for the next Assassin's Creed game, Revelations.